Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's take another look at comets in a way where they reveal something about our solar system. Here we've kind of condensed our inner solar system. We have the four terrestrial planets, the four gas planets, so this is the solar system most everybody knows and is familiar with. And then beyond the solar system, a little bit less known is where we have the copper belt and we have what we call the transit Neptunian object, such as Pluto, which is now no longer considered a planet, it's now considered part of the copper belt or the region where we have enormous quantities in the billions and billions of rocks and ice rocks, so to speak, a combination of rocks and ice that have coalesced into these bodies that some of them are the size of a fist, some of them are probably miles and miles across, and the big ones are several thousand miles across, and they reside in a, in a region that is kind of like a donut-shaped region, a flattened donut-shaped region that then encircles the entire inner solar system. So imagine this big tube coming out here and going all the way around like that, around the sun, the other side, all the way around. But it's situated in what we call the ecliptic plane. It forms spread around a region around the sun in the same flat ecliptic plane as the, as the eight planets and the moons of the planets. And so once in a while we do have a comet coming in and usually those comets come from the copper belt and they streak in, inward around the sun and go back out. And so the period that it takes for one of those comets to make one trip around the sun can be anywhere from 50 to 100 years to as much as several thousand years before they come back. And then there's another region beyond the copper belt and well way beyond the copper belt. Typically speaking, the copper belt starts at about 40 astronomical units and probably goes out for several hundred, maybe as much as a thousand astronomical units out away from the sun. That would be 40 to a thousand times the distance between the sun and the earth. It's an enormous distance, but well beyond that, for thousands and thousands of astronomical units, maybe as much as far away as one light year away, we have this spherical region that completely engulfs the solar system. All the planets, the sun, and the copper belt all around, but instead of being a donut-shaped region, it's a spherical region that is, has a certain thickness to it, and it's again filled with billions and billions of ice rocks and, and other rocks that's mixed in, leftover material from the formation of the solar system that coalesce into those small, tiny uh, planetesimals. Well, they're not really planetesimals because planetesimals turn into the planets, but they're kind of like it, just leftover debris of the solar system that slowly coalesce into chunks, size of a fist, outward to probably many miles across. And we also sometimes get visitors from that region because that region is so far out and because the stars move relative to each other, once in a while a star will come fairly close to the Oort cloud as it passes by our solar system and will gravitationally cause upheaval in that region causing some of these, some of these uh, comets, because that's what they are, comets then to get knocked loose gravitationally and start streaking into the inner solar system. Sometimes just one pass and the other one nearby and if they're fairly large in size, they could throw each other off and send each other to, into a different orbit, a different course that will cause them to come in close to the sun. Now, how do we know that a, a, a comet came from the copper belt and how do we know a comet came from the Oort cloud? Well, when it came from the copper belt, then we know that the comet will then streak and stay within the ecliptic plane. And that's pretty obvious. So when we see a comet coming in and it's right inside the ecliptic plane or very near to it, because there is a, a slight differentiation, some of these can be maybe 10, 15, 20 degrees above or below the ecliptic, uh, the ecliptic plane. But if a comet comes from the Oort cloud, it can come from any direction. It can come from way down here, go around the sun like that and go back. So we know that that one could not have come from the copper belt and that kind of gives it away that there's this other region, spherical region. Why do we know it's spherical? Because they can come in from any angle and we have seen them come in from so many different angles that we know that it must be spherical out there. And so comets from then simply reveal that there's this vast region outside our inner solar system where just billions and billions of these debris object, objects, that's probably the best way to describe them, debris objects, just completely engulf our solar system. And yes, we do get visitors from those every once in a while showing up as comets when they come to the inner solar system. And that is another way of looking at our solar system and how we can figure these things out by observing these comets very carefully. And that's how we do that.